I love I love coming here, guys. Like church church here with you guys is is so good. It's it, it's so good. Um, well, as I say, I, I've been praying a lot about how uh, we want to uh, talk about and move forward with with some of the things that we need to talk about and, and deal with. Um, and so, what I'll start with is is the announcement that that we are um, moving forward. Uh, with the sale of the building, as, as I think everybody in here likely knows, we've had the building, this particular building, and the uh, parking lot across the street up for sale for a little over eight months now. For the first seven months of that time, um, we didn't get any offers. We didn't get anyone to look at it. No one, no one came in. And so um, we, we lowered the price on the, the building, what we were uh, asking for. Um, from $150,000, and we just we just cut it in half to $75,000 to see if we would get any kind of interest. And, and we did. There was a couple of uh, people that came in and looked at the building, and one uh, made an offer on the, the property. Um, and that amount is $60,000 is what they offered, um, rather than a full price of $75,000 or, or anything like that. And, 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 and I'll go into some of the reasons for that, but you, you can... You can look, you know, you can look up there, and you can look up in the ceiling over there, and there are some other things with the building that that I think we've talked about before, that they know that, they, that these people will have to to do some work on it um, to get out of it what they are wanting to. So that's the basic bare bones of what has taken place. Um, with that offer, the first step that I had to do uh, was to take that offer to our church board and to let them know uh, what it was and to determine what they wanted to do going forward. And our church board um, unanimously decided to continue moving forward with the progress or process um, that we were in. And so then the next step would be to take it to the district advisory board. And so we did that last Saturday, eight, eight days ago, uh, and I did a presentation it was really awkward, not awkward. So I don't know how many of you are still like, I've, I have, have been Zoom meeting to death, right? I've had been on the computer doing these Zoom meetings so much. So I had to go on there and, and from my office and, and talk to the district advisory board um, about all this, this same information and what's going on. They asked a few questions about, um, about just the situation here in Sheraton uh, and how we were planning on moving forward, those kinds of things. We had the discussion, and I received word from, from the district office that um, the district advisory board has unanimously um, uh, approved moving forward with the sale of the building. So then the next step in this process, according to our manual, is to bring it before the members of the church, okay? Uh, right now we have 32 um, active members uh, on our list, on our membership list. And so with that, we have to, uh, the, the manual lays out that we have to give an announcement two weeks in a row of the date of the vote. And so that the vote, day of the vote, because we were able to get back in today and, and do a service today, and we'll do a service next week where we talk about this again. And then on July 5th, we will have a vote um, of whether you want to vote yes or no on the sale of the building. And again, just for further clarification, what we need is two-thirds of those who vote in that particular vote need to vote yes. So um, just simple math, if we have 10, or if we have 30 people show up, there have to, uh, 30 members show up to vote, 20 would have to vote yes, okay, for that to pass. So that's just the, again, the bare bones of where we're at with all of that. And I, and I do have some, some words, I think, from, from our uh, Father in Heaven to share tonight. But I just wanted to, to, to lay out, that's the, that's the laying out of this. I'll kind of lay out a very similar thought next week, again, just to, to cover what our manual states. Um, and then I, I do, I've kind of gone back and forth about this, but I want to go ahead and open it up for questions um, that anyone might have about the process that we're going through. Um, I want to also let you know that, so if you have concerns about this that we can address specifically, I, I, I don't want this um, tonight or even next week or, or even on the, the 5th to devolve into any kind of um, division, right? I believe we can be unified in our mission of what we want for the church, even if we disagree on this particular subject, right? And I, I, I don't want this to 
turn into something that it doesn't need to turn into. Does that, does that make sense? Um, I just, I want us to talk frankly, um, but I also want us, if, there, if you have a question that, can, that I can answer, I want to be able to do that. And, and if we need to, to discuss, this is, a, this is a big decision. But as, as, as has been the case over a long period of time, God continues to bless his church. Amen? Like God, God will never stop the church. The church is never going to stop, and that's big C church, right? The church is never going to stop. We, as a local congregation, a part of God's church, need to figure out how we best can fulfill the mission of Jesus Christ here in Sheraton, Iowa. And that's 100% my goal in, in just trying to lead us and shepherd us in that direction. So are there any questions that come to mind that, that we can answer tonight? I, I don't, don't want to take a ton of time, but, you know, we haven't seen each other for a while. Maybe we just want to sit around and chat all night. I don't know. But are, are there any questions at all? In all seriousness. Yes, ma'am. The building of this, of the actual building, I believe... Um, from what, it's a Ukrainian group, and I believe they do want to keep it a church. Um, they actually asked to keep the pews. Um, I, I don't know about all of them. I don't, I don't know uh, what exactly they're, we haven't, because we haven't been able to move fully forward, we haven't discussed all of the details of that, but I, I do believe that that is their plan. Yeah, the same, I definitely know the stained glass win windows are, are something to be valued, and we absolutely will look, we'll, we'll, look, we have to pay a contractor, we have to do whatever we need to do to, to take those with us, absolutely. And I, everything else in the building will go with us or go into storage of some kind. Um, this, you know, and, and so if there's something of value, and, and we may need to look at you know, downsizing, purging some of the things that we've got downstairs. And so if there's things that are, if there are things that are important to you um, that you would want, I, I believe we could open that up to everybody to, to walk through and, and look and see what's available and what's all that kind of stuff. So. That's so part of that. I'll, I'll repeat that. Yeah. Um, so like the, the kind of the dates of when all of this will take place and what's the next steps after that, um, all those kinds of things. We'll have at a minimum we'll have 30 days after we vote. Um, if, if it were to be a yes vote, we would have 30 days um, at a minimum to, for the sale to go through and all that. Right. So during that time, we could actually ask for a longer period of time than that before we were to have to be vacated from here. Um, as far as where we would go, we're, we're looking into a couple of options. M uh, Marcy and I have talked about a couple of different places, and we're going to look into those. One, possibly being the community center, some other places around town that we might be able to get in and rent for a period of time, uh, whether that's just the one day a week, a Sunday service gathering, and then we could look at meeting in other places, whether it's homes or other places, to do some Bible studies and different things like that. Um, really kind of a grassroots kind of an idea behind that as far as just kind of minimalizing um, everything because that allows us to have some freedom. We're not tied to a uh, structure behind that. So, again, we haven't made a lot of detailed plans because we don't know if it's a yes or a no, right? That, so that's kind of where, where we're at. But we are working in that direction to find out the details of the options so we know prices, we know um, where, you know, if we, get st if we need to get storage or if we're going to be in a place that we can put all of our stuff into and that's just our place that we're at, or if we're just renting a space on Sundays or maybe another day of the week as well for Bible studies and stuff like that. So some of those details are still coming, if that makes sense. So and I, I, we just, we haven't done a lot of, I haven't done a lot of work because it might not be necessary.
kind of a thing. So, yeah. What else? Anybody else? Yeah, that would be. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was one of the big questions from the district advisory board that I had to, to to spend some time with them on. Was so, if you're selling the the building, um, what are you going to do with that property? What's the what's the plan for that? And then their what their c biggest concern is, and, I, and so I'll, I'll be frank with you, as they were frank with me. Um, they they don't. So if we were to, for us to break ground on that property, we would, that would be something else that would have to be approved by the district advisory board. And that's any church, no matter what status they're in, the district has to give an approval to say, yep, they've got a good plan. Let's go forward with that. That sounds great. And so with the, the as they look at the history of this particular church over the last 10 years um, and how the, the attendance has declined, giving has declined because of attendance and and those kinds of things, they would want to see growth um, numerically um, before they would approve something like that, right? But I don't think it's much growth. The the DS has every every year that he talks to uh, pastors, his goal for every pastor is to grow their church by five percent, right? Between five and ten percent is what he would like to see. So in a church of twenty five people, we need two to three people. To, to say that we're growing, right? Now, that shouldn't be too hard, guys. Um, and so, that's, so if we can kind of show that over the course of six months to a year that we're working towards growth, that we're actually um, attracting some new people, whether it's through just the fact that we're doing something new and people are like, oh, let's give that a try, or our members, our attenders get out there and say, hey, we've got, we've got something going on here. Why don't you come and be a part of what we've got going on? and we just see some growth, they would be 100% on board with putting something out there. And, and this is another thing. I've, I've made my vision, my dream and, and goal would be to be able to break ground on something next summer, a year, a year from now, to be able to break ground and say, hey, we are doing something with this property. We have a plan. God wants to work uh, in this local congregation, and that's would be, that would be the goal that I would see, the vision that I believe God has given. And, and that's why I've continued to, to kind of stay, with, stay the course with this. Um, almost two years ago is when I first, first came here. Um, and there was, we, we didn't have, a, we didn't have a, any kind of unified thought around this, right? Those remember back to then. Um, and so we took a step back. I took a step back. Right? I, I try to listen and say, okay, how can we keep everybody together and then try to work towards getting on the same page? And for me, God has continued to make it clear that, that we need to see this through, this vote anyways, need to see this vote through, and then as God leads his people in the Sheraton Church of the Nazarene, we will see what our combined vision, our combined mission as we are praying, as we are trying to be unified in this, what the next steps will be after that. But I do believe if we will be able to move forward with this, and if as a church we can inst uh, see some growth in our numbers, I would love to break ground a year from now. I would love to put a date on a sign out there that says, Church of the Nazarene coming on this date in 2021. That would be, I would be ecstatic. So, uh, but that, that's, that's what I see. And, and again, God's got to move in everyone's hearts for that to become a possibility and a reality. So. What else? Yeah. Well, if you, would, if you want to turn in your Bible, Adam's going to put this, this verse up on the screen. It's from Hebrews. I thought he had that one ready. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Foundational verse of our, of our faith. Amen? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, right? Now, we know that we live in a changing world, amen? 
How many of you have lived in the exact same home since the day you were born? Teresa, you have? Nice. You might be the only person I know that is over the age of 18 that has done that. That's fantastic. But that is not the norm, right? That's, that's not the, the, the reality for most people. Life happens. Change occurs. We grow and we move and we find different places. How many of you, Iowa is the only place you've ever lived? Anybody like that? A few of you. What? If you can count college in Kansas for me, that would be, I, could, I can get out of that one. But uh, Iowa has been my home, and I love that. And yet, I have found myself in so many different places. In the nine and a half years, almost ten years now that Rachel and I have been married, we have lived in four places, I think. Yeah, she doesn't know. That's right. Four places. That's crazy. Like, so that, like, uh, up until six years ago, when we landed in Bloomfield, so it was four years before that, we were like, it felt like almost every other year we were, we were moving to a different place. We were finding a different start. We were, we were seeing what God was doing, and, and he was moving us into new directions. And so we come to this point in uh, the life of our church, and I know that this, this, this church has thought about putting a building out and, and, and moving out to that property on Highway 14 and, and selling this building. And there's been a couple of different times where that has come up and it just hasn't happened for whatever reason. And so we can look at that two different ways. And this is what I've been praying about. I want, I want clarity on this from God. And I, and I believe that I, I believe that God has given me clarity. And so then my task as, as the pastor is to try to lead in that direction. And I think you guys, I think you guys have heard my, my heart on this. I believe that the best opportunity for us is not in this building any longer, okay? Um, I think God can work in people's hearts in this building, in this room. How many of you can testify to the fact that he's done it, right? He has worked in this place 100%, and he can still do that. There is no limitations on the power of God. Amen. Amen. That's, that's awesome. And yet, God does lead in new directions at different times. We've, we've had that, this, this verse from Isaiah 43 on, on the wall. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Like, God absolutely... leads people in new directions. And here's why I believe that is. Because God is unchanging, right? We believe that. God is unchanging. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, He is God the Son. He is also unchanging. And when we think of the word unchanging, or the idea of needing to change, it's because whatever has, is happening now that we need to change from, it's not perfect, right? Right? If it was perfect, there would be never be a need to change. There would never be a need to, to walk into something different. There would never be a need to switch jobs. There would never be a need to uh, move houses, right? But, but yet we all know as, as our families grow, we might need to find another place. As our families get smaller, as kids leave the nest, we might need to downsize and find a smaller place. Like There's reality in humanity needing to change. And so with this church in the, in, the, in the place that we are at right now, I believe that God is calling us to change. Not to change who we are as believers in Jesus Christ, as people who believe the holiness gospel message that we need to be saved and sanctified to walk the path of righteousness on the earth so that we can enjoy eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven and to bring as many people along with us as possible. That is not changing and will never change. But the method with which we do it does need to change from time to time. And I think that this is a time when it is the moment where I believe God has led us to this place to say, okay, can we put forth the energy and the effort with which to do something new. Sometimes it's easier to just keep everything the same. Right? 
It's easier to just, just let everything stay the same and the hard work of doing something new, right, can be exhausting. It can be terrifying. It can be downright debilitating at times because it, it's, it, it's doing something inside of us, something that we have loved and have longed for for so long. We recognize the imperfections. We say, okay, can we alter course to get in line with what Jesus Christ has for us? And I think that's a hard place to get to. I really do. And I think maybe that's why, and I want to be humble in this, and I shared this with the board the other night. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the pastor who kind of leads towards this thing and then we, we feel like we hit a wall maybe, and, and uh, this, that's just too much. I'm not going to do that. I really believe God has called me personally to see this through. And that's, that's why I'm here. This is, the, you know, and to, to be able to advance the Church of the Nazarene in Sheraton so that it is here for 100 more years, right? And if we do not do something different, and this is the point of the District Advisory Board and, and statistics all around the country can show this, as churches spend as much time declining as this church has numerically, the reality of closing is on the horizon, right? And so they know that. They're operating with that mindset. And so their hope for a church of the Nazarene and Sheraton to continue is that as this life cycle is gone and we're on this decline towards death of this organization, this church in Sheraton, we have to reinvent ourselves for new life to continue. Right? That happens in businesses all the time. That happens with churches. That happens with, with families. Like you can see this, this death coming. And if there's no reinvention of self through the power of God, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do anything outside of his will. But if there is no reinvention of self, death will come. And hear my heart on this, that might be okay as well. I believe that God has been in the business of, of shutting doors at times, not necessarily in this church, but in churches all around the country and all around the world for a lot of different reasons. And if we as a church body were to discern that from God, we need to be able to be honest about that. I don't think he's shown me that at all. So maybe if you have thought that thought, I would love to have that conversation, but I don't believe he's shown me that. I believe that he's showing me that there's a chance that we could do something different so that we can sustain the holiness message of the Church of the Nazarene here in Sheraton for years to come. And that's where my heart's at. And I believe that this idea of, of a changing world in the face of an unchanging God gives me hope that we can change and God will sustain God will remain faithful in all that he has called us to do. So, the other passage of scripture that I want us to look at is Psalm 146. It's the entire, the entire passage of Psalm 146, which is only 10 verses. So, shouldn't take me too long to read that. Psalm 146, I'm going to find it here in mine. Psalm 146, it says, Praise the Lord. We've done that tonight. Amen? Amen. Has that been good tonight? Come on. We've praised the Lord. That's what we're called to do. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground on that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. Man, I love, I love God. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. 
The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. That is a beautiful psalm of praise, of worship, of adoration, of, of recognizing that nothing on this earth is here because of man. Amen? God is the giver of all things. God is the one whose plans we need to follow. I love the way that that says that. Um, do not trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. I don't want to make any plan for this church outside of the will of God. Amen? And so I know that, that then that I'm going to ask you here now to, to trust me that I'm seeking after what God would do. And the verse clearly says, don't trust any man. That's stupid, right? We trust in God. But here's church. What we need to understand is that God has called pastors and apostles and teachers and evangelists. And I don't, I don't say this lightly. I believe that God has given me a vision for what could be if we could be unified behind it. And so if, if as a church of God, we are a church of God, if we are to believe what His Word says, that He has appointed some to be that way, I, I want to I then say, you can trust me. I want to be like, I want to say like Paul, and I, again, I want to do this humbly. Follow me as I follow Jesus. And I don't know where you land on that. You might say, <laughs> you're an idiot. I don't want to follow any of that. And I get it. I get it. My home church of Des Moines Southside is probably on the verge of this very thing that we are dealing with here. A church that was at one time hundreds of people on Sunday morning services. A church that has seen pastor after pastor after pastor get frustrated for whatever reasons and walk away. And now they've dwindled to where it's just a remnant. You guys seen what God has done with remnants? Have you guys seen, have you guys read in your word what God has done with the faithfully obedient who remain in Him and stay faithful to the mission that He has called them to? Twelve men started. Grew to thousands of people. And all of a sudden, Jesus gives a hard word and thousands leave, leaving 120 remaining to pray in an upper room. And from that, we get the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit comes to the earth and fills the believers of Jesus Christ. The faithful Renman who, who went back to Jerusalem from Babylon to restore God's rightful kingdom. Guys, we can, we can do something here in Sheraton. We absolutely can. And beyond, Lucas County. Like, there's, there's people that need saved here, right? I, I, we talked in board meeting. There are 16 other churches in Sheraton alone. God doesn't need another one to just go through the motions. Amen? And we, we can... We can use this building and not go through the motions. I, I agree with that 100%. But the reality is that hasn't happened over the last 10 years or so. So if a new thing, if a new thing is springing up, can't we get behind it? Can't we see what God is doing? trying to do. And here's, here's the reality. I believe this is the 100% of my heart. God is sovereign. He's in control of it all. And yet, some reason, for some strange, silly, 
dumb reason, and I'm not calling God dumb. Please don't hear that. He uses us. Like he wants to partner with us in this thing, right? So we can say God's got it all. God's going to take care of it. He, he desires to use us. I don't think the word need is the right word. He doesn't need us. He wants us. Amen? He wants us to partner with him. And so that's where my heart's at, guys. And, and, I, and next week I'll preach some more on, on this idea. I would love for you to give me some feedback or some concerns about what you may have, and I can address them either privately or in the service next week or on July 5th as we come together. But my, my ask of you is that you would prayerfully consider what God is speaking to your heart about what's to come, right? We, we can disagree about a lot of things. We need to be unified about the blood of Jesus Christ saving us from our sins. And I believe that if we can have unity in this next step of our church, God is not done with us. Amen? And so, as we pray, as each one of us, as individuals pray, if you pray with husband and wife, your families, pray together, I would absolutely be thrilled if we saw unity in this. As we pray for unity, and I don't want to condescend to anybody that if you disagree with me, that you're not praying, that you're not seeking God's will, I, I would not presume that in any way, shape, or form. I believe that strong smart, capable people have disagreed about the direction of God's will for the last 2,000 years. Amen? Like, we, we see that all the time. But what if, what if we got behind what God is directing us to do and we devoted time and energy and effort and resources into a new thing that God is springing up from these hallowed grounds. The last thing I want to say tonight is that the legacy of this church, the legacy of the Sheraton Church of the Nazarene, is strong. It is strong. People have been saved out of this church. People have been called into ministry out of this church. God has done incredible things in this church, and a new location doesn't change that. In fact, I believe a new location strengthens that. It, it, it reveals, it shows that God has done something and is continuing to do something. Stagnant water is dangerous, right? It can make you sick. So when we stay still, which is what the last... I can speak for the last two years and then ten or so years beyond that. It has felt or looked like from the outside looking in as stagnant water. And I don't want to be rude or offensive to, to everyone who has been here for that period of time. And I think that if we are honest, we know that we need to do something different. That definition of insanity is very apt here. To continue to do the same things and expect something different to happen, man, let's, let's, let's let God show us something new. Whether it's a new location or if it's still here, we need to do something different because God's doing something different. And I believe that with all my heart. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, I want to I want to get this right. These are these are heavy decisions. There's a, there's a lot riding on this singular decision of whether or not to sell this building. God, I want to give honor and praise to what has happened in this place. We want to we want to praise your name and give glory for the lives that have been changed, for the families that have been changed.
because, because a mom or a dad or a, or a, a teenager got saved and they took your, your spirit home with them and it changed their whole family. I know without a doubt that that has happened out of this place. And God, I want that to continue in other homes around Sheraton, Lucas County, Father God. And I believe you have something for us to do in, to, to participate in that. And Father God, what I believe you are leading me towards, what I believe, lead, believe you are leading us towards, is a fresh start. To, to turn over a bowl of, of stagnant water, to be refilled with your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit needs to come in and refill us all the time. That's not, a, that's not a criticism. That's a reality of understanding that we need to be filled every day with the Holy Spirit. And not just us as individuals, Father God. What we're realizing is our church needs to be filled with your Holy Spirit. And that doesn't get tied just to one building. That gets to go wherever anyone in this room right now goes tonight. That's where your Holy Spirit is going. Father God, you will be praised wherever. You said the rocks will cry out if we don't do it. So, Father God, I pray that as we as individuals go home over these next two weeks and we pray and we ask for your Spirit to give us guidance and we, we truly seek what would be a unifying reality for holiness preaching and teaching in Sheraton, Iowa. God, let us be unified in your spirit, in your spirit alone. God, we thank you and we praise you. We lift your name on high, the name above every other name. Jesus, we love you. Amen. I would invite you, uh, I know that I was late today, but next week, 4.30, I would love for anyone that wants to gather and pray together before the service to be here at 4.30, and we'll just cry out to God together. I think that would be a beautiful opportunity for us to seek out how we can be unified through prayer. And so I would just invite you, if you're able to come at 4.30 next week, we'll do that. And then on Sunday, July 5th, our, we'll have a regular service and I'll, we'll sing and worship and I'll preach. And then it'll be after the service that we'll have a table set up in the back for, for any member who is here uh, to vote. It'll be a simple yes or no ballot. And we'll cast that vote. Um, and, you know, we'll see, we'll see how things go. Uh, if you, I know, I know Vera has been one who said, you know, she wants to come at a different time because of the, the coronavirus possibilities. If you, if you or, or if you talk to another person who we haven't talked to already, uh, want to come um, earlier in the day, uh, let me know so we can, we can get everything set up for that time. And so I'll, be in, I'll call Vera and then we'll talk and get a time set up where she's comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, we want to make sure this is available to all members. And I believe every member on our active member list has been communicated with, and that's in accordance with the manual. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think this is kind of a, I want us to end well, guys. Uh, would, would we be opposed to singing the family of God one more time? Would that be okay? Yeah? All right. Not, I was hoping for a little bit more enthusiasm on that, but that's all right. Uh, I think Linda will take care of the enthusiasm for us. Well, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Thank you, Jesus. Lead us out. Let us follow your will in everything that we do. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you so much for being here.